Yep, I hear it. I can hear the thunder. I can't see anything yet. It's starting to cloud over. It's been a beautiful morning. Um, I've been kind of cleaning up the shop. I try and keep it as clean as possible. Um, that's just part of my deal. But I'm hearing thunder, so I don't know how much longer we're going to have before I have to close the garage roll-up door. But we're going to try and get a spray session in. It's just been a beautiful morning. Gorgeous outside this morning. But we've got some storms rolling in. So this is part two of our spray session on stenciling and shading. Let's get into it. All right, so I've got this Rapala here, and it's a large one. It's part of a seven-piece order from Musky Niche. These things are really cool, and if you were with us last time, you saw that I was doing a little bit of shading with a bit of mesh and netting. We're going to recreate pretty much the same thing. Um, I've got some black loaded in the chamber, and I may not have enough because I was doing uh, another little project here, but we're just going to use a little bit of mesh and the only reason I'm meshing because this is a chrome Rapala, it's a chrome perch um, but I want to give a little bit of pop to this once we're finished with it I kind of want just a little hint of color to come through which traditionally on the pattern that I'm about to show you what we're going to be doing today it wouldn't be um, it would be as muted as possible, but that's only if it's on like a military uniform. So I figured since I get creative integrity to kind of do my own thing on a couple of these pet, yeah, the storms are flaring up. I don't know how much longer we're going to have before I've got like lightning on top of me. Um, when I get creative integrity and somebody's like, do your own thing on one of these, I always try and think out of the box. But everybody's been asking for shad patterns lately. But when I think about shad, it's like shad patterns and shad patterns. And, and they've been done to death. You've had Tennessee shad and the gizzard shad and the threadfin shad. And, and the shad. 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 So today, I figure, but well, let's just kind of switch it up a little bit. I'm going to do a muted camo pattern shad. Uh, like a like a digital camo shad and the type of camouflaging you would see on uh, like the urban or the snow it's not like the field camo it's more it's more drilled down and like digital pixelized camo so we're gonna start with some basic black on top of chrome and again the only reason that I'm doing chrome underneath and showing that is to kind of make it pop for the fish so because this is gonna get thrown at least it better I'm really hoping that it gets thrown um, don't just wall hang it that these I, I spray these things to for you guys to catch fish on them but I'm gonna get this dry off camera I'm gonna come back unwrap it and start running that digital camo pattern with some shading techniques that we learned in part one keep that this is now dry and the only like I said the only purpose of meshing this thing at all was just to add a little bit of pop off that chrome that's underneath of it in a couple of different colors. When we pull this off, it does look really, <laughs> it looks really cool. Um, this in itself would be fairly decent, um, but we're gonna trick it out even further. Put this off to the side put it back in our helping hands and get rid of these. I love having the roll up open in this garage because I get to hear all the sounds of nature. Now we're gonna come over the top and give it a little bit darker of a back going to make all this disappear through our pattern. 
and get rid of those yellow eyes because that's one thing that we don't need on a digital camo pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and darken this back. This almost looks like kind of a hot tuna pattern that I used to do, although there's a lot more undercurrent that goes on where you can actually see the colors better when I'm doing that pattern. So we're going to incorporate a couple of different stencils right on top of this in a couple of different key colors and because we have a dark background we're going to be using lighter colors today. So we're going to go with our whites. Um, not pearlized yellow, I want just a standard golden. Pull these off to the side here. There we go. Now you can see what I'm actually doing. Put that one back here. Now the first thing that I'm going to come in and do is lay down some basics. And I'm going to lay it down in the most opposite color to black. Obviously that is white. I'm running fairly high pressure just to get some of this stuff down. And I'm randomizing where I'm throwing this. Um, the whole premise of this is to make it random like a camo pattern would be to kind of blend in with other things. So we're just going to get this down here and I'm going to remember that the scales always go towards the back here and just add in a few of these random scaling patterns. There's that Thunder Kids. Cue up ACDC. It's pretty decent. Love these. You can grab these from Brian Best at uh, Anarchy Model UK. He's pretty quick about getting them shipped across the pond. Maybe just a couple more. Just kind of give that overall look to it. And maybe one on the chest. There we go. The next bit of shading that I'm going to do around the face and the cheek area, the gill plate, is just to give a few spots. This is the creature feature, the modeled pattern in extra, extra tiny. And then kind of run through a couple areas that may not have them. There we go. Get one going up there, there, just a little bit here, and again we're randomizing this. Anywhere where there's not an existing scale pattern, I'm going to throw in just a little bit of this modeled shading stencil. The whole purpose of this is to do something completely different that not everybody else is doing and that's one of the things that I try and ask of you. It's not a, a huge ask but try and be original and creative in your patterns. Think outside the box. Think about stuff that you don't normally see. Um, especially if you're laying it down on a proven bait. Um, the motion in the bait and all the research and time that they've put into testing that bait is gonna help catch but then when you have something that the fish especially in pressured water something that the fish have not seen before they might be a little bit more inclined to have a reaction to it I've loaded in just a little bit of wicked golden to this pattern and what I'm gonna do is just 
gently. And no, it's not reduced. You guys ask that a lot. Just add in a little bit of yellow detailing towards the back of the sides and the bottom of the bait. And as you can see, this is translating pretty well because you can still see the dark background behind it, which is intentional. But you can also see just the hint of yellow that we're adding in. It really just kind of disappears onto that black, which is the whole idea. Basically, this whole exercise is to kind of get you guys thinking out of the box, giving you some fresh ideas that you can then incorporate into the patterns that you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to add, now this is a mix. Um, it's transparent. I started with Wicked Apple Green. I then incorporated some transparent gray, a little bit of silver, pearl silver, one drop of burnt sienna, about three drops of jet black, five or six, maybe up to ten drops of white. And what I get is a pretty sexy olive color. And if you want to see what that looks like, and that's, that's relative. Basically, I start with the apple green white goes in next and then you mix the colors into that um, and you and you you get a pretty decent i would say that's a really good looking olive color it's pretty true to what olive should look like at least in my head and then we're just gonna work up a little bit darker Just a, a few spots there. Push that out and then I'm going to go moss green. And that's going to be extremely randomized. And with the moss green, let's see here. Got to get it back. A lot of people ask how I organize stuff. Usually light to dark in the color pattern just like you would see it on um, a color wheel or a color chart. I have a few of these color charts plastered to the wall also in the uh, catalogs that I've just pulled pictures out of and offline. You can get, like if you look at their catalogs, Bomber has a good catalog. Um, Storm for Wiggle Warts has got a really good catalog. They've got some of the vintage stuff in there as well. So you can find them online. And then we're just gonna come in Go a little darker and a little darker. Kind of model that in. Throw that off. Now we're going to come in. Where did it go? I just had it. There it is. With some of this black magenta. And that's going to give you some darker shading and darker scales. But you should still be able to recognize the scaling and the patterns that we've put onto that. So this is just for your shading benefit. Just run through, get a couple on top, a couple back through here. Just uh, again, this is a randomized pattern doesn't need to be specific wherever you decide to put it. 
But the whole principle is to show you how to adapt different types of skills and patterns, change up something that you've seen a million times. Now before we put on our, and we're going to do a white shad dot on this, but before we put that on, I'm just kind of, I've got just a little bit of that schminky that I think so highly of, and I'm just going to kind of throw a little bit on the back of this, the nose of this, and a couple of places down the sides. And when the light reflects off of it properly, boy, what a what a cool shade. There we go. Now we are not quite done. I've got black loaded back into the chamber. And then we've got this digital camo stencil. And we're just going to run a couple spots. And boy, it <laughs> really tricks us out. I love just kind of coming back and making something cool even cooler. You see what's happening there? We're just going to I was thinking about doing white with this as well, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to just kind of leave it as is, just run a few patterns down. This is an art tool stencil. Pick it up on Amazon. I can leave you a link if you want it below. this up there. I know some of you were like, where's the camo coming in? Here it comes. There it is. And all we're doing is just kind of giving a, a general mask. in a couple of spots all over this bait. Kind of mute this out a little bit. And it does look cool, folks. Camo always looks cool. As I'm finishing this up. Drop just a little bit back here. Maybe one more up here. A little spot in between. Get some of this on the belly area. A little bit less on the throat because you still want to have a little bit of a lighter pattern. Kind of dab this off as we go. I'm going to flip this around if I can do it to the other side here. Just finish this side off.
Now, I know there's some shad traditionalists out there that are going to be going, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> You'll see. Again, this is just out of the box thinking. It's turning a tired, old, dusty pattern into something a little bit different. Spicing it up for a night bait. Just having fun, doing something cool. It's okay to play around and uh, get some fun ideas. And there we go. So now we have a very digital camo looking bait. It's dark, it's gorgeous. Got enough of it on the belly to where I think we're good and we were able to keep some of that lighter trait from the original chrome perch that was on this Rapala. So here is what we're gonna do. This is a bigger bait so we're gonna use a bigger shad dot and I don't know if you guys can see this if the camera's picking it up any sort of good way but what's happening here is the mold that this Rapala was pressed out of has got a very defined cheek gill plate area. So we're going to drop this white shad dot in the middle of the bait right about here just behind the, uh, the gill plate. So we're going to see that, move it back, and lightly spray that in. doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Shad aren't perfect. I'm not perfect. Not by a mile. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just come to the middle, run it right off the back of that, drop this down. And there is our shad dot. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm thinking I almost like that better without, but we do kind of need a, a key in target bullseye on the side of this fish. I'm going to drop some eyes in now too, and I'm going to use the white in the chamber to lay down on top of the gold, or actually underneath the gold, and I'm just going to Q-tip that in. Um, that's pretty much all they've done with the bait in Europe. So the way I'm doing this, I just, here, I'm probably easier to show you on black. I'm taking it, smashing it, and then I'll have the eye. And that's about the size that we're going to use. So now I have a fairly round area to work with. And I'll just dip the end of that in lightly. Get my thumbprint off there. And then I can still see, you guys may not be able to see this, but I can still see where the original eye was on this, on both sides. I just need to look for where that pupil went. There's one here. And one directly on the other side from it, right here. Get you guys in frame, sorry about that. Drop it down right there actually make it a little bit bigger and instead of trying to dab another q-tip in exactly the same spot we're going to come back and use that shading technique that i was showing you over here and just run easily over that white that's really not going to affect the bait at all but now we have yellow eyes and i can put a, a black pupil in there and uh, it'll be all groovy just need to drop actually i don't even think i'm going to waste bringing it out. I'm just going to drop some Q-tip here into this and then just kind of roll it off because I kind of want that a little bit tighter, a little bit smaller because we're doing a pupil here. And then as I have it, I have the tip a little bit tighter. Now we're just going to Steady our finger, use that, steady the finger, and drop pupil 
into the middle. And before we mess it up, we just want to make sure that that is round, as round as we can get it. And then just come back, try and hit it in the same area on the other side. Use your finger to steady it and drop that pupil right onto that eye. I am going to show you the last part of this real quick. I've got the KBS out. We're going to pull. I've got everything heat set. I'm going to pull the tape off of this bill as quickly as I can because I've already pulled the saran wrap off of the lid from this. So this is obviously it's been used before. This is an older Rapala. Well, I was going to show you how I did this. Unfortunately, but basically in the KBS, <laughs> let's go through it the right way. You dip it head first and slowly bring it out. Put your drip wire in the nose and then re-dip it tail down and then you can just let it drip away. Because it's self-leveling, if you're a little bit low on your solution or your clear coat, because you're self-leveling with this clear coat, you're not going to see a line where you've dipped it twice. It's going to cover itself very easily. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the process. Well, folks, that's going to do it for me today. I hope I was able to teach you a few things. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on the channel here is your finished product. It is clear coating. It is in the process of drying out. This is the Stealth Camo Shad. The Shad. See you guys on the next one. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.